Are you ready to be razzle dazzled? Because that's who we have here. The razzle dazzle litter of mini multi-gen Australian Labradoodles from Van Isle Doodles. And this is their five week update. Who can believe that they're already five weeks old? I hate to think that they're more than halfway to the date when they're going to leave us because this litter is so much fun. It's only four puppies, but they are all such dolls. We really are enjoying this litter. So today we're going to talk about what's happened with the puppies in the past week, a little bit about Ripple, and then we are going to talk about raw food and feeding a raw food diet. So let's start with the puppies. As you can see, they're really feisty now. They're very interactive. They play pretty much constantly. So this little one who's down here by my lap, this is Blue Collar Boy. Now we had our family visit last week and Blue Collar Boy had a little bit of an upset tummy from his transition to solid food. So he was a little bit quiet and really didn't want to come and see everybody too much. But as you can see, he's quite over that now and he is a playful, lively fellow. And you'll probably remember from before that little blue collar boy is a tri-color puppy. And by that we mean he is a full party and a full phantom. His phantom markings are the tan points that you see on his eyebrows and the side of his face. And you'll see that the teeth are all very important and going through now as they are chewing and biting on everything to get those teeth to come through. So blue collar boy is a real sweetheart. He was, like I said, a little bit quiet at the visit, but he's a happy fellow who likes to engage in play and plays with his friends, and he's really enjoyed meeting all the new people that he's met this week. So let's go hoo -hoo over here to this other flying dervish. <laughs> and this is Pink Collar Girl. She is almost a clone of Blue Collar Boy in that she too is a tri-color girl. So she has those phantom tan points and she is, of course, a full party. And she has those same teeth that she's trying to get through. And she's quite happy to chew on my fingers, my toes, and anything else. Pink is a very lively and outgoing little girl who likes to play all the time and is always really quick to run up and greet me in the morning. She's a lovely little girl. And next, we have here the other boy in the litter, and this is Purple Collar Boy. Hello, sweetheart. Now, Purple Collar Boy is also a tricolor boy, but he's a little different in that he has a solid face. He just has his white up here, so his face is quite unique and very, very striking. The beautiful juxtaposition of the copper with the black, and then this little hint of white over here is just adorable. He is a handsome fellow. Purple is also very playful. You can see he's not quite as bitey as the other ones. His teeth are not in quite as much as the rest of the puppies. So he's a little bit more fun to snuggle with right now because he doesn't bite me as much. There you go, Mr. Purple. And last but not least is this little monster over here who is always getting herself in a pickle. And this is the biggest dog in the litter. And this is Red Collar Girl. And she is, as you can see, again, very different looking from the rest of the puppies. Red Collar Girl has a full white face and that one little black eye. Mm -hmm. And she is very affectionate. She kisses and kisses and kisses. She is the most kissy puppy I think I've ever had. So she may be a try as well, because if you look under her ears, you can see there's some of that phantom marking. That could be phantom, that could be sable. I'm not sure really what it is that she is, because her phantom markings wouldn't show up with all the white on that face of hers. So she may be like her litter mates, and she may not be. It doesn't matter. Either way, she is the sweetest little puppy. Very lively and outgoing. So I have some things over on the side here that I actually want to show you later, but the puppies seem to think that that's the most exciting and important things in the world. And this is typical of puppies and children. Whatever it is you don't want them to do or see or play with is the thing that's the most fascinating to them. So just remember and keep that in mind for when they come home with you. These two toys we have today are what we call stuffless stuffies. They crinkle and they don't have anything in them. They both used to have squeakers, but the grown-up Labradoodles in our house have removed the squeakers. That would be their mother, Ripple, who has done that. 
Strippel is absolutely obsessed with getting these toys, so finding the squeaker and removing it. Goodness knows why, but that is her mission in life. So these are great though. You get the puppy's attention quickly. They, they are really enjoy to playing with them. And it also teaches them not to be afraid of different sounds. So this week, the puppies have been doing really well on their solid food. They're all eating quite a bit. Um, they're still nursing for the most part. Ripple is a very generous mom in terms of how long she lets her puppies nurse. And because Ripple lives with us, we let Ripple decide when she thinks she should wean the puppies. When we have a guardian dog, we try to make sure our guardians have their dogs back by six weeks. And we encourage the moms to, to have their puppies weaned by then. But when they live with us, if they want to go for a little longer, we let them. Sometimes they choose to do that, sometimes they don't. Ripple really enjoys being a mom and she really loves having her puppies so she usually lets them nurse to some degree right up to the, the day they go home. What we do is we make sure that they aren't still actually getting their nourishment from her so when they do go home there's, there's no big transition to go through. So the puppies are still eating their goat's milk, pablum and pumpkin and now that they're five weeks and they do have most of those teeth in we will be transitioning them into adding some raw food to their diet in the next two or three days. So we'll start with giving them just a small amount mixed in with the pablum and the milk and gradually replacing it so that it is 100% raw. Now we're going to talk about raw food today and feeding a raw food diet because for many people this is something entirely new and for lots of people it's it's a little intimidating to think about feeding your dog raw there's many many things on the internet about raw food there's many fallacies there's many myths there's many vets who are opposed to it and on and on and on and like many things that are a hot button topic there's lots of misinformation out there so we're going to do an overview of raw and I'm going to tell you all why we switched to raw and then we're also going to talk about feeding dry food because not every dog in the world obviously is going to be on a raw diet. We strongly encourage everybody to keep their puppies on a raw food diet for their entire lives, but we also recognize that sometimes that just isn't possible for some dogs. Indeed, we have uh, one guardian dog, uh, that's Gigi, and she simply both doesn't really care for the raw food, but she was not able to tolerate it. We tried many, many different variations and her guardian families were amazing with uh, putting up with all of the different things we tried, but it just didn't set, sit well with her and she was an unhappy girl and not gaining enough weight. So we switched her over to canned food and kibble and uh, she's doing much better on it now. So. Like I said, there's no silver bullet or magic answer for every dog. But for most dogs, raw is preferable and far better for them. It's pretty seldom that you're going to find someone who says, oh, I switched to feeding my dog raw food, and then they switch back to kibble. It's usually only if there's a physical reason why the dog is not able to eat raw. So what about raw food? What, if you, what have you heard about raw food? Some of the things that people bring up as concerns to us is, well, what do you do when you're traveling? How can you take raw food if you're going camping or if you're going on a car trip or going across the border? So the, the answer for that is really quite simple. There's a variety of ways you can feed raw food and the easiest for traveling, camping and things like that is using a freeze dried raw product. Those are so handy. They just come in little small little blocks and you can either reconstitute them with water or goat's milk or you can just feed them to your dog dry. They take up very little space and the dogs all really love them. And uh, we'll give you a link in this video to the brand that we find to be the best for um, freeze-dried raw and that's Primal and we prefer them because they're the most natural process for, for making the food. Uh, it's an expensive form of feeding so you don't want to be doing that all the time but when you're going on a trip or some other occasion like that or visiting friends it is a great solution. So that's that one out of the way. The other thing is the cost. 
Yes, feeding raw dog food does cost you more, but in the long run, it doesn't because you are having your dog much healthier and in much better condition with much better balanced gut. You will have far fewer visits to the vet. Your dog will live longer. You never have to pay for your dog's teeth to be cleaned, all sorts of things like that. So you really end up not paying more. It looks like more up front, but in the long run, you'll be saving yourself some money or at the most paying the same as you would if you were feeding a kibble. One of the biggest advantages as humans for feeding your dog raw food is the poop. The poop is greatly reduced in quantity. It does not smell very much. And if you don't get around to picking it up, guess what? It disintegrates and blows away. It's a miracle. It's really wonderful. It, it just turns into a white powdery type of substance and the wind just takes it away. And of course, because it is an all organic product, it's really good for the environment. And when birds are eating poop or other animals, it's also, you're providing them with a better diet. So all around, it's, it's much better for everybody in nature and the world. So how do you feed your dog raw? What are the things that you need to consider? Well, the main thing you're going to hear about when people say, oh, raw dog food, it's really hard to balance. Many vets will tell you that it isn't balanced. No matter what you do, you're not going to be able to balance it. Uh, some of them will talk about, as well about bacteria and salmonella. So one thing about that is about 30 to 35% of all dogs have salmonella regularly. They are just as likely to have salmonella from eating a kibble product as they are from a raw dog food product. So that's a, a bunch of hogwash if someone tells you that they're going to get salmonella. Uh, and there are far more recalls of dry dog food than there are of raw dog food. So salmonella doesn't generally bother dogs. It can, but it generally doesn't. Can they pass it on to you? No, not very likely. Dogs do not have a certain enzyme in the saliva in their mouths. So when they eat kibble, that kibble can transform into bacteria. All kibble fed dogs have a bacteria filled mouth. So when those dogs lick you, they have bacteria on their tongues from their food. That kibble, because they can't properly uh, deal with it, because it's not a natural food for them, what it does is transform into sugar in their mouth, and that's what coats their teeth and becomes plaque, and also causes gingivitis because it sticks to their gums. And that's what makes the bacteria in their mouths, and it also destroys the pH balance in their stomachs. Oh, we're having a big war going on here. <laughs> we have purple and Miss Pink having a little battle there. And they're not even fighting over a toy. They're just having a little set too. <laughs> the dogs are having lots of fun playing and interacting and learning their doggy manners these days. So back to the raw dog food. Uh, when they eat the, the raw food, the pH level in their stomach is properly balanced. Dogs have a highly acidic stomach naturally, and that's what they get when they eat a raw diet. Uh, kibble is a very, very alkaline type of diet and it, it upsets their microbiome and their gut balance really quite, quite a bit. So it makes a huge difference to your dog's internal health as to what it is you're feeding them. There's many other reasons to choose a raw diet um, and we won't go into all of them today. If you go back and look at our other videos for the Blonde Brownies and the Cafe Noir litters, you'll see our videos on raw food and learn even more there about it in detail about some of the advantages, some of the reasons we switch to a raw dog food diet and also the amounts and the, and the type of food that we feed. But the things that are important when you have a raw diet is indeed balance. But if you buy a commercially prepared product, uh, it's not, they're balanced. Those people know how to balance the food just as well as anyone else. What you want to do though, is you want to, when you choose a product for your dog, make sure you have the nutritional analysis and you have the ingredient list. And you wanna make sure that that is going to correspond with the balance that I'm going to tell you about shortly. Uh, there are some, I'm sure, products that aren't ideal and probably aren't properly balanced, but for the most part, what you're going to find on today's market, now that Raw's been around for a while, is going to be fine. And 
in Vancouver, the lower mainland in general, on Vancouver Island, throughout Alberta, everywhere now has a good selection of really good quality raw products. Uh, so wherever you live, if you're on this list and you're going to be feeding raw, you can just tell me what is available in your area and together we'll go through it and determine which brand is the best for your dog. Now, one thing that you need to have with a raw food diet is fresh bones. Fresh, meaty bones are critical because that has the calcium and phosphorus that a dog needs. Lots of products have calcium, but no phosphorus. And without the phosphorus, the calcium is not properly absorbed or able to be utilized by your dog. And as puppies, calcium is very important for their growing bones so they can become big and strong babies. So it's really important right from day one that you're feeding your puppy lots of nice, fresh, meaty bones. Indeed, that should be one third of their diet. Now, what kind of bones should they be having? The, first of all, they can eat any bone under the sun provided it's raw. It's absolutely critical. They never eat a cooked bone. Cooked bones are the ones that cause the problems. Vets will awful, often say, oh no, don't feed your dog a bone. They get impacted, they get a puncture in their stomach, blah, 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 all sorts of things that sound ghastly. So first of all, dog who's on a raw diet has that proper pH balance, the high acid. So when the dog eats the bone, that acidic stomach acid is able to break the bone down with no problem. If you have a dog who's on a kibble diet, that pH level is severely, is severely impacted and nowhere near as acidic. So when they do eat a bone, they could eat a piece of bone and have it not be able to be dissolved in their digestive juices. So it's important that you understand that differentiation. Secondly, most of the problems that vets find with bones are from people who mistakenly feed their dog their leftover steak bone or roast bone, thinking, oh, isn't this great? So what we recommend for your dog for bones is chicken wings, chicken backs, chicken legs, chicken thighs. Those are all fantastic bones for your dog. Chicken wings are awesome to start off with for your puppy because they're nice and small. The bones are soft. It's easy for them to eat the whole thing and digest it readily. So when you get your puppy, they'll already have been exposed to eating some of these bones. And lots of people say, chicken, no, you can't feed chicken. Isn't that bad? But again, if it's raw, it's perfectly fine. It's only if they're cooked that there's a problem. Another fantastic thing is turkey necks or chicken necks. When your puppy is young, a chicken neck is a better option because they're a little bit smaller. Then when they're older, a turkey neck is fantastic. The other thing that's really good is lamb and beef neck slices and also lamb or beef ribs. Those bones are all really good for them too. Now most raw dog food stores will uh, have the lamb and beef slices available for you. The chicken you can buy anywhere, obviously. Rabbit is also really good. Uh, generally that's available quite readily, but tends to be a little bit more expensive. So your puppies have been eating, well, will have been eating lots and lots of beef and neck slices as well as some marrow bones by the time they go home to you. And when we feed them a lamb neck, that constitutes one of their meals for the day. So the, lamb, the bones rather are important for one third of their diet. So when they have a bone, that is one of their meals because they're eating three times a day when they go home to you. And they'll stay on that three times a day until they're about six months old. So the other thing that's really important is organ meat. That's like the multivitamin for your dog. And you have to be really careful if, again, if you're going to be making your own raw dog food, it's really critical that you don't feed just one organ, that you mix them up. If you have just one, you are going to have a dog with an upset stomach and diarrhea because the organ meats are very rich. So when you buy a product that's already commercially made as a raw dog food product, there'll be lots of organ meat in there and you'll be able to see on the analysis that, that it comprises generally 30% of the makeup of the entire product. And that's what you're looking for. So you are gonna be looking for liver, kidney, spleen, pancreas, uh, sweetbreads, brain, and lung are the sort of things that you want to see in there. Now each product may not list specifically what the organ meats are, but as long as it says organ meats, that's good. Um, and there'll be a variety of them. 
And then the foundation of a whole raw food dog diet is muscle meat. So that could be ground beef, ch cheek meat, stewing beef, uh, small amounts of beef heart, not too much of that because that is an extraordinarily rich item and you'll get diarrhea for sure if you feed too much of that. Ground turkey, turkey breast, thighs, uh, stewing lamb, ground lamb, lamb shoulder, pork shoulder, pork butt, and boneless pork rib meat, uh, and chicken boneless thighs and chicken breast. All of that muscle meat is really good for the dogs. Now, the one thing you want to be really careful about is to limit the fat. Uh, give, giving your dog too much fat in a diet is going to give you some long-term health problems. So you don't want to be going if you're making your own and buying a bunch of cheap meat when, when it's on sale because generally it tends to be really high in fat content. But if you take your time and look around and shop the sales, you'll be able to find the quality meat products like I just listed there when they're on sale too. Uh, we buy uh, usually from either Superstore or Walmart whole pork loins and whole tenderloins when they have them on sale and they have that quite quite frequently on sale and, and they're a really good buy. So with the fat you want to limit it to about 10 to 20 percent of the total amount of what they're eating any more than that and you're going to run into problems but don't limit it to less than than 10 percent because it's really important for dogs to to have good quality fats in their diet and you can also feed fish about once a week dogs have a little bit of a harder time extracting the value out of fish but fish provide many many benefits to dogs uh, so a lot of the raw dog food suppliers will have whole herring um, sometimes whole trout available you can also use tinned salmon if you like um, or you can use sardines those are all really great choices and options for your dogs that they really enjoy them and they're good for them now what about supplements? Do you need to supplement when you're feeding your dog a raw diet? You don't have to other than a couple of things that I'm just going to show you that they, the things they were trying to get into. The one thing that we give our dogs all the time is a canine species specific pre and probiotic made by Adored Beast and this is called Love Bugs. This is a small jar but you feed very little of it to your dog each day. Now we have these available through Van Nile Doodle, so you can order this from us. This jar is $35, but it will last you a long time. I believe it'll probably last you for a little bit more than two months. Um, I may be a little off on that because I feed at least six dogs a day, so I'm just trying to calculate, but approximately two months worth, so it's not really that expensive. It's really good for keeping your dog's digestive system in balance. It's really good for their skin. It's really good for everything all around. It's a really good product. It'd just be like you eating yogurt. And the other thing that's really a good thing to add to their diet is phytoplankton. This one is one that we sell as well, and this one is from Adored Beast. Now, this product from Adore Beast is expensive. You can buy it in a cheaper format from Amazon or at London Drugs, and it's marine phytoplankton. The reason why this one is more expensive is because it is grown sustainably in an environmentally ethical manner on land. It uses Atlantic ocean water, which has all been filtered. So all of the heavy metals have been removed, but all of the benefits are in it. So you have chlorophyll, you have, um, it's vegan of course, and there's no fillers or anything else in it. It's um, all a single stelled organism with trace minerals and essential amino acids and all sorts of really good things for your dog. When we started using this and we started using um, a less expensive one initially, we couldn't believe the difference in our dog's coats, in their nails and in their eyes. It really made a major, major improvement. Now this size here will last a single dog about four to five months and it's $130. Uh, so it's not that expensive day to day, but it is a little bit of an investment to start off with. I'm just going to pop those over on the other side there so they don't eat them all. Um, and you can also, uh, with the phytoplankton, you can feed it every other day easily. Uh, that's what I generally tend to do with our dogs. Unless I have a dog that's showing me a really dry coat, which has not happened since we switched to raw food, I usually give it to them every other day. So then it lasts even longer and becomes even more reasonably priced. 
Other than that, you don't need to do anything. So it's the bones. Um, a commercial product is what I'm going to recommend and what we use. Sure, you can make your own. Balancing it is a bit tricky. It does take time and you do have to have quite a few products on hand to make it up to you. If you prefer to make your own, obviously, then go for it. Uh, then you know exactly what your dog's eating. But there's so many quality products out on the market now that it's not as necessary as it used to be when the, when the whole phenomenon was first starting about 15, 20 years ago. When I used to breed Siberian Huskies way back in the 80s, they all ate raw dog food. Nobody had ever heard of that at the time. And I had to travel for, well, it took me a day and a half to get to where I needed to go to be able to find raw dog food that was suitable for them. But, and that's all they, they ever ate. It, uh, it, the whole industry has come a long way since then. So, and the overall cost is not really different if you buy it or you make it. So I would highly recommend that you, you buy a product now, one thing that's really important is variety. So you want to have different proteins all the time. So not just chicken, not just beef, not just lamb, etc. And I would recommend you change brands. I would find two or three or even four brands that your dog is happy with and alternate them. So maybe you have brand A beef on Monday, you have brand B chicken on Tuesday and brand C lamb on Wednesday. Just remember, it's important that your dog have at least 50% of their proteins from a red meat source, not a white meat source. So what about kibble? What if you have one of these dogs that just isn't doing well on the raw? They don't like it, they have diarrhea, or whatever the case may be. What are you going to do then? So kibble is not ideal and the main problem with kibble is all the starch even if you have a grain-free product there is still starch and grain-free as you've probably read lately is has its own issues uh, for some of the brands because it's too heavily based on legumes in order to get all of the balance there so the brand of kibble that we recommend is Nutrients Sub-Zero and either the Northern Lakes or the Prairie Red version of those two. The Prairie Red will be my first choice because it's all red beef, red beef, <laughs> red meat proteins. It's bison, lamb, and beef. And the uh, Northern Lakes is trout, lamb, and there's something else that I forget. Ah, duck, that's the other one. So it's also good and it is a combination of red and white meats, but I prefer the red meat formula to the combo one. However, just like with raw food, dogs need variety. So I would buy all of their different types of Sub-Zero. There is a chicken as well. Our dogs are a little bit eh if you give them that, they don't like it too well. And there is a fish one. The fish one they also are not too fussy about so when if you are going to feed kibble start with just a really small bag of each one and see because some dogs just simply just like people just some of them don't like some things but at least try to give them um, a variety of the different proteins that are in there and then sub-zero also makes a canned food so you can buy some of the canned food to give them as well I would only recommend this as a really, as a last resort if you can't get your dog to enjoy raw. Even if you did a 50-50 split where you did raw for breakfast and kibble for dinner uh, or vice versa, I think that it would be much better for your dog. You don't want to mix the raw and the kibble together in one meal because there is that pH difference and also there's a different amount of time to digest the food. So it's best if you separate them entirely and have quite a few hours in, the, in between there so one meal is digested before you feed them the other. Um, I, there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's not as good as doing all raw, but dogs get bored. Our dogs, sometimes we give them a kibble meal and sometimes we will go for a month alternating them because they look at the raw and go, oh really? Oh, well, I've seen that for a long time. No matter how much we, we vary it and give them the different proteins and we buy them all sorts of different things to try and when they have bones and everything, they'll still go, oh, yeah, well, hmm. So we'll give them kibble. And it's funny because when they haven't had kibble for a while and you feed them a kibble meal, it's, wow, this is great. And they gobble it all up. So we'll give them that a couple of times and then we'll switch them back to being on all raw again. 
it's not ideal. It's better if they stayed on all raw, but it's more important to me that they're happy and that they're eating what they want. And I like to listen to my dogs. I want them to tell me what's going on. So if I have a dog that's saying no, 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 no to what I'm trying to feed them, then there's a reason it, you know, and sometimes like with people, when you don't like a certain food, it's because it doesn't agree with you. So my uh, son-in-law is well able to eat super hot, spicy food. My own son can. I can't hardly tolerate anything that's spicy and I naturally don't like it because it makes my stomach upset. And that is, I think, what happens with dogs too. When they tell us, no, I don't really like this, it's not because they're being difficult. It's because I think they know that mm, this doesn't sit in my tummy comfortably. So don't force them. The other thing you can do is you can home cook for them. Um, and that's a, a whole other topic. But basically any raw food diet you can make into a home cooked one if it makes you feel better that it's cooked. And some dogs will prefer that. And again, give them raw, give them a bit of kibble, and then give them some home cooked things. And there's nothing wrong with giving them treats off of your plate. People tend to get so excited about that and think, oh no, never any table scraps. If you feed them from the table, well, be prepared for them to be having themselves at the table with you. Uh, we have a couple of guardian dogs that we know get fed at the table because their heads are on the table next to our plates. Now, our dogs will come around and look for something, but they also don't beg at the table. They know if we have something, we'll let them know and that to hang around isn't going to get them anywhere. But as long as there's not a lot of onions or garlic or other dog unfriendly things in the item, you can go ahead and share it with them. Not things like avocado, which dogs can't eat and, it's po and are poisonous for them. But if you have a bit of steak or chicken on your plate, go ahead, give it to them. Scrambled eggs, dogs love scrambled eggs. So if you're making scrambled eggs for breakfast or if you're making bacon and eggs, make a bit extra and give that to them for breakfast instead of their regular raw diet. Not too much bacon, just the same with people. Just variety and moderation in, in everything. So use your best judgment and always, once you have your puppy home, just email me and ask me, tell me what the situation is and I'll be happy to help you out with that. So raw food might be something new for you, but it really is an easy option and it's so much better for your dog and will save you money in the long term and your dog will live longer. And I have a little sheet here and this is the 10 raw feeding rules for dogs and it's really for people more than dogs. So you have to make sure number one that the diet includes calcium. So lots of fresh meaty bones. This bone doesn't have very much meat on it. Number two, I have to look and see what it says, it's organs. Organs are the multivitamins that you have to give for your dogs. Number three, the meat needs to be muscle meat, not junky meat. Number four, watch the fat. Again, 10 to 20% at the most. Number five, don't get hung up on fruits and vegetables. Dogs don't need fruits and vegetables. If you want to feed them fruits and vegetables and they enjoy it, by all means, as long as they're the safe ones. If your dog likes raw carrots, and many do, feed them all that they want to eat. They're good for them. If your dog likes bananas and apples and berries, go ahead, give them to them. They're not going to hurt them. Make sure you keep it all starch free. So no rice, no pasta, no potatoes, nothing like that. They don't need any starch in their diet. And don't forget that variety counts. Variety is really important. So those are the 10 basic things and we'll have this up for you as well. It's, it's really not hard to do and there's so many resources that you can find. Um, Dr. Karen Becker is probably the best one. She has many YouTube videos. She has a recipe book. Dogs Naturally also has many recipes. Dogs Naturally, I find, is a little bit over the top um, and tends to think that you only can feed organic and you can only feed raw or else the world's going to end. That's a little bit over the top for me, it's fine. If you don't always feed organic, that's fine. I don't feed our dogs all organic food. And if you don't always feed raw, that's fine too. Our dogs, as I just said, do not always eat raw. So it's nothing to be scared of or intimidated about, but you really will notice a difference in your dog's health. 
your vet will notice it even when they don't like raw food. We have one vet who is absolutely opposed to raw dog food and he'll always say, wow, these are great puppies in really good condition. And I always remind him it's because they're weaned to raw and their parents are both raised on raw. And he gives me a hmm because <laughs> he doesn't like that. But everybody has their own opinion. And if you're vehemently opposed to raw, just let us know. We'll talk it over and see what we can work out. So thanks for watching this week's update. I hope you learned something and that the information was helpful. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and uh, we hope you're subscribing to the channel and getting all of our YouTube updates. And we'll see you again next week.